Hi, my name is Godwin, also known as Narvik on the forums. And uh, part of my job here at Triumph is making levels in our level editor for the game. So uh, today I thought uh, let's give you a preview of our level editor. It will ship with the game and it will uh, allow you all to make beautiful maps. You get the exact same level editor as we have ourselves. So you will be able to make pretty much exactly the same campaign and the same things that we uh, have in our game. Uh, let's start with a bit of the basics first. Uh, I'm thinking let's make some nice elven area here. Uh, at first we're going to scope the terrain, make it a bit nicer. That's completely empty of course when you start a new map. Uh, we can paint some mountains here. Uh, if you paint more then the peaks get higher automatically. That's pretty nice. So let's see. Some nice mountains here. That's one I don't really like. Let's see. There's one. It looks prettier. And then if it's large enough we can maybe add some trees. Elves love to live in the forest, so we should be quite happy with that. Add some trees here. Maybe some different trees in it as well. I'm um, adding some pine trees near the mountains. That's actually nice. I think it looks nice together. Uh, we can make here a bit of a rock fall where the mountains have fallen down. And of course, some water is nice. Make a little river coming from behind the mountains and uh, flowing to a nice uh, little lake here. Else we're settling next to the lake because they like fish or maybe they don't but they just like the water I don't know and if we make sure that the river has a narrow path to a bigger area of water then you will see automatically it start to, starts to flow so that's also pretty nice so automatic um, then of course or else we'll need a place to live in so let's see give it a structure a city Let's put it right here. Right now it's all random, so every start time you start up the map you get a different race, a different size. But we wanted elves, so I'll just put down here high elf race. And a size, I'm thinking maybe something like a city, quite big. There we go, nice elven city next to the forests, the mountains and some water. All right. Uh, let's give some more structures, maybe a watchtower to look over the water, see what's on the other side. And some mana nodes, of course, else like mana, since it's next to water, let's make it a water node. Of course, some income, always need income, so gold mines would be good for that. I like to place gold mines near uh, mountains, because it sort of makes sense in my head. If I can find them, the icons have changed recently. <laughs> uh, whoa, this is the new icon for the gold mine. All right, some gold mines here. And um, yeah, that looks good already. Maybe add some bit more uh, re relief, relief. I don't know what the English word is, but some height differences. Make sure that it's a bit more natural a bit less like a flat pancake and um, maybe add a little road going somewhere you can uh, let it go around the uh, lake here go around here going somewhere else hmm let's see uh, where does the road lead maybe it leads to a goblin city in the neighborhood um, uh, let's place down the city first. There we go. We select the race again. Resource goblin. Size a bit smaller. Make it a village. And goblins, they actually like to live in a uh, swamp. They get a bonus from that in game, so let's give him a bit of that. They should be happy with that. Alright. And maybe some of these swamps to break up the looks and some normal empty swamps 
All right, let's move some willows. That always looks good near swamps, I think. And near water, actually, as well. And then um, maybe some danger on the road. If we want to go to the goblins, we must encounter a obsidian dragon. They're actually, uh, in-game, they wouldn't be visible since they are uh, concealed in the swamp. So it will be a nice surprise for anybody following this road. And let's say that it's found a stash of gold and that it's guarding that. Or maybe two stashes. No, that's a bit too much. All right, that's pretty nice. Now we need to give the uh, cities a leader since uh, you'll be playing a leader in if you make this just for independence, not a whole lot you can do then. So let's place down a leader somewhere in the city. Uh, you can already give the city to our leader, of course. Would help. And for the goblins, we'll give it to the other player. There we go, player two. Place it in the city. And some units to defend themselves. Also, some uh, normal uh, units will spawn by default. If you just leave the city empty like I did now, they will uh, get defended anyway. You will have to uh, switch it off if you don't want that. It's also possible, of course. Actually, not doing it the most efficient way. I can also change the player here. Let's do that for the elves. Give them a bit of a start in the starting army. Longbowman in the trees. And a griffin rider near the water. Turn around that way. And a few unicorn riders. There we go. Now we might be ready to uh, see what this can do. Oh, maybe actually I will show you something else. We have a lot of different climbs and it's really easy to change the theme of, uh, of the land. Just take a big brush size, Let's choose convert to theme, and there you go. Everything's arctic, or everything's volcanic, and all the looks will automatically be updated. So let's not ruin the nice elves and just keep them in um, temperate, but let's make blighted swamps for the goblins there. There we go. It's all pretty easy to do, pretty simple, lots of things to do. You can also uh, try to uh, enhance the map a bit, make it uh, give it a unique look. We have a lot of different decorations we can use for that. Uh, let's see, maybe some um, statues here. You have special ones for in the corner. There you go. And maybe some torch lights. Mm, I don't know. It doesn't really look good. <laughs> Remove that tree there. Alright. And let's make the road go through that, actually. So, that's the entrance to their domain. So they have some torches to guard the swamp. To uh, guard them from the swamp, actually. Um, there's quite a lot of decoration we can place. We can place some... Uh, Bikes with skulls here for the goblins. And maybe some bigger bones here. A lot of creatures have sunken in the city, in the, in the swamp, and died. We have some uh, mysterious mists maybe here around the obsidian dragon. Maybe his breath causes the mist. And we have some lights we can put in here. There. So, we can now, if we want, try this out in game. Uh, we just click save and play, and it will launch the game, and uh, we can try to uh, see how it looks there. It's loading a bit, and then we should be able to start. Our Elf City is here. Some extra troops. And we have a road towards the enemy. So we can try it out. Oh, there's the obsidian dragon. Indeed concealed. 
All right, so we've shown you a bit of the basic map editing to make a le level itself, and now we can uh, show you a bit more advanced stuff. We have here the settings, the map settings. These, these are uh, a lot of settings that you can set. Uh, you can customize quite a lot of things. For example, um, whether you want the wind condition to be scripted only, or leaders, or just the d normal default. Uh, whether you want to uh, have the max hero levels, etc. You can all lock these as well if you want, really want to uh, prevent people from choosing otherwise. Uh, players you can set the diplomacy between the players. You can change the peace, fixed peace, war, fixed war, alliance, fixed alliance, or neutral, or haven't met yet, basically. This means uh, that they haven't uh, encountered each other yet. You can do the same for cities, independent cities, uh, towards uh, every player. So, um, quite a lot of settings there. And, uh, of course, you can also uh, script the map. You have, uh, for example, markers. You can uh, add a uh, stack area trigger, place it down, and you have here some settings that it triggers on everyone if you leave, leave this empty or just the players whose alias you fill in if you do that. Uh, scripting is quite easy. You just click this button, make a new script here, name it. And, uh, for example, if you want the script to fire on stack enter, then uh, you drag this here, and if stack enters it, then whatever you type here will happen. Uh, the language that we script in is Lua, so you can uh, probably uh, find easy tutorials for that uh, online if you don't already know it. So um, it's a pretty nice language to work with so far. Um, yeah, that's about scripting. Uh, we also have the uh, campaign editor. This is uh, the tool that we also used to make our campaign. You can uh, add your scenarios that you've made. For example, we just made this test map. So you can add it here. You can add as many as you like. Uh, you can set a name, description. There's also always room for a custom string. So you can just type in there what you want to show. You have the briefing. You can make briefing pages like we have in our game. If you just right click here, add new page, you can uh, set an image here to link so that there's something in the background. You can uh, type in the title name, just uh, the normal story that you want to tell, and all kinds of things. So uh, yeah, it's a pretty powerful tool to make uh, campaigns, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, see you make uh, user-made campaigns. Um, thank you for your attention.